Hey internet, Eric here. Uh, well, today is Slashback Saturday. Um, if you don't know or you're new to the channel, Slashback Saturday is a concept over on the Horror Man's channel. I've, I've done these uh, a few times where he gives us a, spe a, a specific theme um, and we have to find a sp uh, slasher film that fits in that category and then discuss it, you know. Pretty simple. This week's theme is Christmas in July slashers, and um, basically it's just a slasher film that takes place at Christmas time, um, not winter time, specifically Christmas time. And I've been wanting to do this one for a while. Obviously, I would do it around Christmas time, and it's July. But I'm glad he picked this one because I've been wanting to do this one for a while. My choice for Christmas in July slashers: Black Christmas, the remake, 2006. Now, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I discuss plot spoilers, specific scenes, and all that crap. So watch at your own risk. Um, yes, it is the remake of the original Black Christmas. Um, but the basic plot of this is following a group of sorority girls at Christmas time. Um, they've all gathered together, um, either because they're not going home or this and that. And at this specific time, we find out that you know this this sorority used to be the home of a man named Billy who was a severely abused kid, um, ended up killing his mom, uh, her lover, um, sent to an insane asylum, and every year he tries to break out to go home. And this is the year he finally breaks out to go home, gets home, and causes some mayhem. That's basically it in a nutshell. Now, I mentioned spoilers. To give this one a really good discussion I'm going to have to spoil some major plot points so if you actually have not seen this version or you don't care you really are watching at your own risk um first off I really enjoy this one I'm so glad we got Christmas in July because this one would be perfect for like my you hate it I don't playlist because it seems like everyone craps on this one but me um first off we'll get to the characters the sorority girls are pretty interchangeable for the most part, but I think they're likable. I mean, first off, it's like a cavalcade of hot actresses that you've seen before. Like, we got Michelle Trachtenberg from Eurotrip and Harriet the Spy. You know, she was on The Adventures of Pete, Pete when she was younger. Lacey Chabert from Party of Five, not a teen movie. Um, and Mean Girls, you got um, Katie Cassidy, you know, David Cassidy's daughter, Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who is in uh, Sky High and Bound Destination 3 and Die Hard 4. Um, lots of recognizable girls. All nice to look at, and they're they're likable for the most part in this. They're they're very they're not very they're they're pretty much the same characters, you know, but they're they're not the stereotypical sorority girl. They're there to look pretty to 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 fight with each other, to talk about boys and this and that, but they're also some are drunks, some are, you think one is this, um, like Lacey Chabert, you think she's a spoiled brat, but she's the one who knows how to change the fuses and stuff because her dad showed her how. Um, so they do have their little quirks. You got the, the, the drunk one, who is the only one whose name I don't know. It's the one right here in the pink top. Um, who She's basically, I think, the Margot Kidder character from the original. Um, so even though they don't do a lot, they don't add a lot, they're still likable. I mean, I can't pick one that I like more than the other because, you know, Katie Cassidy, she's got her her um, good qualities. Like, she's she's the, the final girl, obviously. Um, she's strong. She can scream just like, you know, like with the best of them. Uh, Michelle Trachtenberg, she's the strong one. You got, like I said, the drunk one who is basically the comic relief. I really like when the drunk one talks to tries to rip apart um, the meaning of Christmas. Um and so on. So the sorority girls are fine. Um, you got the, I guess you would say the house mom right there. Does her best to keep everybody together. Does her best trying to re re protect everybody. And then when, <laughs> I love when there's a scene where her and uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead are trying to escape. And their car is covered in snow. Her frustrations come out because she pulls out the uh, the ice scraper. She hands it to, to Mary Elizabeth and... Mary Elizabeth just looks at it and she says, what is that? And then house mom kind of rolls her eyes, gets out and tries to scrape off the snow. And she said, she just calls her like an entitled bitch or something like that. So good at being a protective house mom, but then shows her frustration. So I like her a lot. Um, one of the girls who is murdered earlier on, um, her sister shows up. 
um, played by whatever actress was the the teacher from the first Final Destination movie. Um, she's she, she's just tough, take no nonsense character. I liked her a lot. She didn't put up with anyone's bullshit. Um, very likable. Um, so and I think that's cool that we actually have two people from like the Final Destination series in this. We have the teacher from part one, and then we got Mary Elizabeth from part three. She was the main girl in part three. Um, so overall, the females are pretty good. Now let's get to I think I think the last name is Lutz. Let's get to that family. We got Billy. Billy is the main serial killer, and he's scary looking. He's vicious. He's disgusting. And he's got a really fucking weird backstory. Um, he was born with jaundice, like severe yellow skin. He looks like yellow bastard from from Sin City. Um, came from a home where, you know, the his parents hated each other. Dad was loving. Mom hated the dad. Mom hated Billy because it reminded her of the dad. So she was mean to Billy from birth. Like I love the scene where, Dad just you know got Billy in the bassinet and Mom's like drunk already on vodka she comes over to like the christmas tree and grabs like the ornament um it says like baby's first christmas and she crushes it like right over the the bass and then just sprinkles like the broken glass in it so that shows how billy had a fucked up life from birth and i love that character um I love how when we see him as an adult, how vicious he is. One of my favorite scenes is how he breaks out of out of the insane asylum. You know, he gets his dinner and it's 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 chicken and Christmas cookies and candy canes. And to show how over the top this movie is, he takes the candy cane, he sucks it into a shiv, and he ends up sticking it in the guard's neck and then escapes dressed as Santa Claus because there's a Santa Claus guy walking around and in the asylum because it's Christmas time. So, and then when he's killing these people, it's brutal. We get stabbings, we get eyes gouging, eating eyeballs. Um, we'll get to the gore later. So I like the Billy character. Now, I mentioned major spoilers. There's going. This is a major, major spoiler. There are two killers in this film. They don't really hide it because Billy looks completely different from this other character. Billy is yellow with short black hair. We also see this second killer who is a really, really tall, long-haired woman we'll get to that agnes agnes oh, more of billy's backstory um <laughs> billy's mom eventually kills billy's dad because she's got a lover they kill him and bury him under the porch and one day during a drunken sex romp he falls asleep while she's fucking him and she's still horny and goes up to the attic where they've been kill keeping billy locked up and she finishes the deed with billy in such a creepy disgusting way I think they just did that to make this whole thing uncomfortable. Not really necessary. Ugh. Nine months later, Agnes is born. And uh, Billy eventually attacks Agnes because, you know, she gets all the love and Billy doesn't. Well, eventually, after Billy kills, kills everybody, you know, as a young boy, Agnes is sent to an orphanage. Well, Agnes is now holed up at the the sorority house and she's killing everybody too she's scary as fuck as well um looks creepy because i think a great idea is they had agnes portrayed by a man in a wig to help with that off-putting incestual look kind of like what they did in the original pet cemetery where they had a skinny man play the zelda character just so it looks off um agnes is dangerous as fuck too also She's the one doing the uh, the garbage bag or the plastic bag over the head thing that we get uh, that was made so famous in the original movie. We get eyes gouged out just you know you know from her as well. Um, again, great gore. So she's scary. Um, and then we'll get let's get to to Mama. Um, evil character. You know Agnes and, and Billy's mom. Like I said, the first time we see her, she's crushing that that um. Uh, Christmas ornament just showing how much she hates Billy um, she's always looking sweaty and gross and she's always chain smoking and drinking vodka and she's just she's a disgusting whore so evil she reminded me of like an an, <laughs> an over the top maybe Mrs. Deagle from Gremlins not over the top like dialogue wise because Mrs. Deagle talks like a mile a minute and this lady is more subdued but just like how 
you know the this woman will would good would kill your children type of character. So I like that family overall. Um love the gore in this. Now this is the unrated cut. Okay? And it's unrated for a reason. We got gore wise, we like I said, we have eyes gouged out and sometimes we still see like the muscles and the tendons hanging from the eyes. There's a scene where Agnes pulls out someone's eyes and you just see like the muscles hanging. We have both Billy and Agnes like to eat the eyeballs complete with close up of the mouth and squishing and stuff that comes out. Ah. Oh. In palings, we have stabbings. We have icicles falling on people's heads and coming out the other end. We have oh, so good. And the, oh, um I love what Billy does to his mom and her lover. He kills them both, okay? I don't remember how he kills his dad. I think he just bashes his head in or something and strangles the mom with like Christmas lights. What he does then is he takes the bodies and you see him taking these metal cookie cutters. I think it's from the 70s. He, he puts them in the skin and cuts out little shapes of like angels and stuff. He bakes the skin and then when the cops show up, they see him literally eating the baked skin of like his dead mom. And again, um... Glenn Morgan was the director. Close-up shots of Billy's mouth just ripping through the uh, the charred flesh with like even he's even got fucking icing on top of it. So great, great gore. Um, I like even though it, I don't understand why they did it. It's just again to make it look weird. I like that Billy's just fucking yellow. It makes him an outcast. It makes him stand out. Um, unnecessary, but it's kind of a thing that I really enjoy. Um. I like how when they do like the flashbacks because it starts out in present day and then people are telling the story of Billy because there's I guess there's an ongoing tradition in this um, sorority so since it was Billy's home that all the girls give each other Christmas presents and they also have like they do a secret Santa thing someone gets stuck get, getting a present for Billy so the uh, house mom tells the story of Billy so then we cut back and forth between the house mom telling the story and every now and then the people at the insane asylum are telling the story but it cuts back and then you got like the little time stamp in this really cool red font you know it says like 1970 or whatever um so i really like that i thought it looked cool um do i have any complaints about this film um there is a, a subplot of one of the boy katie cassidy's boyfriend shows up and they um he's a real douchebag because he was cheating on her and videotaped him fucking another girl which went nowhere um, so that was kind of lame and stupid. I didn't care about his character at all. Um, good death, but didn't really give a shit. Um, the incest thing, I knew it was just to make the mom seem even more disgusting, but you didn't really need it. Um, but it, it's really a cringe moment. Like you see Billy, he's just sitting on his rocket chair and her hand just comes up on his shoulders and she stands in front of him and you see her legs and suddenly her nightgown drops and then it cuts to nine months later in that cool font and it shows a little baby i'm just like fuck that's nasty but it's necessary but not necessary anyways not a lot that i don't like about this movie it's not fantastic but it's just a whole lot of fucking fun um great i like the great the the last bit in the hospital where you find out billy and agnes aren't dead and uh katie cassidy's got to defend herself um there's a death at the end that uh, uh, that I really wish didn't happen. I won't spoil that, but it happens in the hospital. Um, oh, more gore! I love how you know Billy finally meets his end. That's really cool. Um, I will say this: another thing that annoyed me is they play Dance of the Sugar Foam Fairy all the fucking time through this movie, and it does get annoying and grating after a while. But overall. Oh, I really, really enjoy the Black Christmas remake. I think I enjoy it more than the original. Granted, I've only seen the original once. Um, I might not have been in the mood, but I found it incredibly boring. I liked Margot Kidder because Margot Kidder is awesome. Um, I watched it once. I had no desire to watch it again. I probably will. This one I've seen many, many times because it's a fun, fun slasher. Um... The girls are decent, even though no one's special, if that makes sense. Billy and Agnes characters, love them, love the gore. I love how Bob Clark, who directed the original, is an executive producer, and he, he's even in the bonus features. Like, 
on set and talking to people, so that's cool. Um, what else? Love, love the gore, love the look of Billy. Um, just a lot of fun. Oh, and what's really funny is this one didn't make a lot of money because a lot of, I think, Christian groups protested it. Kind of like, um, I don't know if they did it with the original Black Christmas, but it's kind of like what they did with the original Silent Night, Deadly Night. Uh, you know, you can't show Christmas in this type of light, and it was taken out of theaters and this and that. And it was also criticized by a lot of Christian groups because it was released on December 25th, which is great marketing. Come on. But overall, highly, highly recommend Black Christmas, the remake. That, I'm so happy we got Christmas in July because I didn't have to wait to rewatch and discuss Black Christmas. So I'll say thank you, Horror Man. Um, that's it. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Click the bell. I'm getting closer to 666 subs. If I keep that for a week, I'm going to uh, do a giveaway of some of this crap behind me. Um, I, I got a new podcast coming, or I got a new podcast out already called Two Bearded Losers. I have the video playlist of it in uh, in on my channel. We do have it on an audio file, soon to be uploaded to iTunes. We have two episodes already in the can and uploaded. It's on anchor.fm. I think it's also on Spotify. You can find us on Spotify. I have another horror movie podcast coming uh, with my buddy Johnny over at Here's Johnny's Reviews. I mentioned him before. Um... Lots of stuff, and I got a couple unboxing videos I got to do. Um, we got Bloody Sunday tomorrow. I got an excellent pick for that. Um, I'm rambling, so in the end, I'm going to say cheers, and fuck it, it's July, but I'm going to say Merry Christmas, especially if it's a black one.